Hello, everybody. This is Zach said it again. I'm your host, Zach Cooley, and I'm honored to be here with a longtime friend and uh, drone photographer who has just returned to the area, uh, my good friend, Mr. Corey Parker. Corey, thank you so much for talking with me today. I've been waiting for this one for a long time. <laughs> my pleasure. Well, good to, good to hear you, and um, good to be on the podcast, and give the uh, the general public a little bit of knowledge about uh, myself, my business, and a little bit where the uh, the industry is headed and some of the rules and regu- regulations regarding that. So <clears throat> feel free to go ahead and take it away there, Zach. Well, we're going to get right into it, uh, but uh, before we do, I just want to mention that uh, you and I have known each other a long, long time, and uh, I have, and I have always had tremendous uh, respect for you and your talent, and you've always been a very kind uh, friend. And it's uh, and it means a lot to me to uh, reconnect with you uh, now that you're back in town with your lovely new bride, who is also uh, someone I've had the pleasure of knowing for a long time, um, Mary Go- the former Mary Gordon Jennings. Uh, I hope uh, that you all are uh, uh, very happy and enjoying yourself as newlyweds. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. it. It truly has been a wonderful and learning experience along the way. And uh, yeah, likewise, you know, I've known Jack here for a very long time, uh, you know, classmates, friends, uh, somewhat neighbors growing up. And it's uh, it's been a long time since we've we've connected. And so I'm glad we've been able to do so and uh, looking forward to um, the the next half hour here. Yeah, well, as you know, I have great respect and ad- admiration for all of the things that you've done. You've always been a very uh, creative spirit, opening, uh, open to trying uh, things that are outside the box. And I was very excited when you approached me a few months ago to say that you were in uh, drone photography. So can you tell me how you got into photography and how that gave way into working with the drones? Now, I want to clear up one thing. Uh, The drones that, for those who may not know, have to be certified by the FAA, which is the what is the FAA? What's the acronym? The Federal Aviation Administration. Which means that they are a legitimate aircraft. They are. It is a legitimate aircraft, whether or not it is manned or unmanned, which I think is very, very interesting. And uh, so if you want to uh, get into a little bit about how you got into photography and how that gave way to the drones and such. Yeah, my pleasure. So, um, yeah, photography has always been um, a, a very prevalent hobby uh, growing up ever since childhood. Um, you know, I was always running around, um, you know, it's very fascinated with the, uh, the Polaroid system, uh, you know, no uh, dark room. You don't have to send it off uh, to a lab to be developed, you know, just point shoot. And then you have a tangible product right there in your hand. Uh, to me, that was uh, very fascinating growing up. Um, so once I was old enough to um, actually uh, receive my own camera and, and treat it as my own, um, I started uh, in the very late 1990s. Um, uh, I remember specifically in, um, in 1999, uh, my uh, parents had uh, purchased for me a, a Nikon uh, 35 millimeter uh, camera, that, which uh, that's about the time I met you. I'd like to add. Yeah, yeah. That, that's about right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the, the digital cameras um, were just in early development um, and uh, actually did have a small little pen style camera, kind of like a little spy camera that you're able to take a very low Im- uh very low resolution image connected to a computer. And then, you know, you could see your images that way. Um, now, as far as the quality goes, you know, that, that wasn't something that you would go and you'd want to make portrait prints of your family. Um, but with the Nikon and the film camera, you know, that, that definitely, uh, it was a larger 
piece of equipment felt a little heavy, you know, kind of expensive if you were to drop it and break it. So, you know, you, you kind of treat it with respect. And um, the interesting thing with the 35 millimeter, that particular style camera was able to select between, you know, a portrait style mode or even a panorama. Um, Kodak was experimenting with a type of film called Advantix, which allowed that particular sensor to crop itself and um, be able to fill the frame of uh, the film, you know, at different aspect ratios. So, so for me, being able to uh, use the same camera to print a panoramic photo and a portrait photo was very interesting to me. Um, so as I got older um, and, you know, started experimenting a little bit more with um, not only just point and shoot cameras, but um, a manual adjustment, you know, being able to adjust your shutter speed or your, uh, the aperture, how much light is let into that camera, you know, that opens up an entire different can of worms. So um, as you're aware, whenever we were kids, um, we were required to do uh, a science fair project at the end of every year. I'm sure, Zach, you remember those, right? Oh, yeah. I, I actually uh, always chickened out. You had the option of either doing the science fair project and or taking the exam, and I always bit, bit the bullet and took the exam. I was... <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I, I was I was not the, the greatest test taker there, so I was like, you know, we'll, we'll just procrastinate a little bit and, uh, you know, wait till the day before. No, I'm just, just kidding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. As most of us did. Right. But, um, no, so I was trying to figure out a way to incorporate uh, photography into the science fair project. Uh, so, luckily, uh, I had a really close friend. Um, I'm sure that, uh, Zach, you, you knew him as well, uh, Seth Gibson. Yeah. Uh, yep. So uh, Seth's mother, uh, Ramona. Ramona. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. She she was very much into uh, film photography and um, actually had some experience uh, using um, a darkroom so to develop her own film. So we sat down at the table and tried to come up with an idea of a way that we could um, do a, a science experiment um, revolving around photography. So what we came up with, um, the title of the project was. Um, the effects of shutter speed on moving objects. And uh, so pretty much all that was, was uh, we set up a tripod uh, right across from uh, Mark IV Honda shop. So we had uh, the interstate traffic and, you know, as a, as a constant, we were able to determine, okay, well, the traffic is traveling anywhere from 60 to 70 miles an hour pretty constantly. So that gave us our constant. And then the variable, you know, being, um, you know, adjusting the shutter speed uh, to be able to freeze that vehicle, you know, dead in motion there, um, and then happen to control the light because the more light that you're letting into the camera, it's, it's just like your eyeballs. You know, if it's bright outside, you, you, you're you kind of squinting, you're trying to reduce that amount of light, uh, so therefore you opt to doing sunglasses. Well, the same is for cameras. The, the faster that shutter speed is, the more, uh, the less light is to enter in. So if you have a very fast shutter speed that we're trying to freeze these cars, you must change that amount of light that's going into the camera known as an f-stop or an aperture setting. So um, anyway, did a did the science fair project and actually wound up taking first place with that. I'm trying to remember, I believe that was my sophomore year. Um, and the funny thing is, I just recently came across that poster board uh, in my, my parents' closet. So I have it sitting here. So in the near future, I'll have to go by Ramona's and, and uh, see if she remembers us setting up on the side of the service road for an afternoon, just taking picture after picture. Um, and then, of course, you know, we'd have to wait for the, those images to develop. And time was of the essence. So we were just, you know, fingers crossed making sure that, you know, the film was loaded correctly and we didn't overexpose, and, but uh, everything worked out great. And, um, you know, I was very surprised that that particular uh, project took first place. So uh, ever since then, you know, I was like, man, I, I might have something going on here. So, um, you know, I, I really didn't think about, you know, turning it into a business until, you know, two decades later. Right. And, uh, you know, took a little hiatus uh, from photography, got very involved in sports, action sports, and um, kind of put the camera uh, down, you know, just because we have a we have a camera in our cell phones now that 
you know, can take incredible pictures. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you know, when you show up to uh, an event and you're taking pictures with a cell phone, sometimes people get a little like, wait a minute, who did we hire here? So right. it kind of got me think, thinking a little bit differently as far as being able to, to you to take that hobby and all of the equipment acquired and um, not only make it a business, but to be able to share those moments and memories captured um, with friends, family, and um, strangers alike. So um, there's some there's a big satisfaction uh, with me whenever you you know you, you print a photograph and you hand it to the customer or the client, and you know the, they just get cheery eyed because maybe the family members have have since passed or um, you know, the, the family hasn't been together in a very long time. It creates these emotional moments for not only the, the client, but, but as me uh, being the photographer as well. So to me, it, it, it's not about uh, the money at all. It, it, it's really about sharing those captured moments and memories with uh, those people. And, and to me, that's, that's really what it's all about. And um, so to, to move along, uh, with the timeline as far as uh, my photography career, um, I was able to visit New York City uh, in 2000 um, before 9-11 uh, happened and was able to take a wonderful photograph. It was just so happened to be the last roll uh, or the last frame on the roll and uh, we were on a boat uh, to Ellis Island. Um, so I was able to capture the Statue of Liberty I've actually and I've ours. actually t taken that boat. That's amazing. That's an, mm -hmm. that's an amazing journey just, from New Jersey to New York and back again. Right, you know, and you're you're outside of the boat. You know, it's it's blowing everywhere. You're elbow to elbow, and you know, just so happened, I was like, well, I have one more frame left. Left. Let's see if we can grab that moment. And sure enough, uh, we did. And uh, you know, of course weeks later didn't know that until the the images were developed and um you know still have that image today and uh have sold quite a bit of copies of it uh and you know unfortunately those those two towers are no longer there so you know that's a that's a bit of history that i, I captured and will be able to hold on to forever so um you know my mother is like you know you should really think about uh you know becoming a photographer and like, well, you know, I have a bunch of other hobbies and there's so many other photographers out there and I just kind of, you know, downplayed it just a little bit. Right. So, um, you know, it wasn't until uh, the pandemic when I was like, you know, there's nothing, you know, we can't do anything outside. Uh, I'm going to do some homework and some research and, um, you know, maybe get a little bit, uh, invest a little bit into some equipment and, uh, We'll start up an LLC, and, and, and sure enough, that's what happened, and it, it took right off. I was involved in food and beverage for about 15 years prior, and, uh, you know, I was just like, you know, the with the pandemic and everything changing, I, I said, you know what, let's let's drop that and become a, a young entrepreneur and, and see where that takes me, and I'm, I'm very glad I did. It has been a very liberating experience, and, uh, you know, I've hit the ground running and you know no no looking back there so that's kind of a, a brief history as far as uh, my photography goes so <clears throat> well and, uh, th and then how do you transfer from that to drones okay so in 2016 uh the first consumer drone uh was available on the market and um you know that uh, that technology was, uh, had already been utilized within the, you know, the government and private sector. Um, and it took a lot of time, uh, for the FAA and other lawmakers to be able to, to make that a consumer based product. Uh, so at that time, uh, the technology was very expensive. Um, there was little known uh, legalities about that. And it was kind of a, a scary thing if you were a business owner, um, you know, flying recreationally and flying uh, for compensation is a completely different ball game. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, I've always been um, very focused on uh, aviation and uh, avionics, you know, loved flying in an airplane as a kid. Um, you know, something about the, the aircraft just fascinate me being able to get that bird's eye view. So it wasn't until... Um, so have you flown a plane? 
I have not flown a plane. No, that is definitely on the bucket list. Okay. But uh, been passenger on quite a few of them. Um, you know, been in uh, some helicopters and um, things like that. They're not, they haven't had the pleasure of actually, uh, you know, going up with a pilot and being able to take the sticks. Uh, so that is definitely on the bucket list. And there are some uh, some local uh, airfields that do offer that type of uh, that type of service. So you know, hmm, you know, now you got me thinking, Zach. I might just have to uh, give myself an early birthday present there and and take advantage of that. Uh, yeah. I mean, that, that, that totally kind of left my mind. It's like, oh, I do have that option, and I kind of forgot and about I'd, that. And so. I'd love to be there to kind of capture the memory if that does happen. All right. Well, uh, we'll sign us both up. Let, let, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Um, so let me back up just a little bit here. That uh, science fair that you won your sophomore year would have been my junior year. Was that in Kelly Russell's class? That would have been, yes. So we were, that was, I was in that class with you. Mm -hmm. I was, I was actually in that class with you. So uh, I just, right. just wanted to clarify that. Yes. <laughs> um, we were. And uh, well. then I saw you, um, I don't know how long it was um, that I saw you. I don't know if it was prior to the pandemic or if it was just maybe a couple of years ago, but you were living in Colorado, I believe. That's correct. In ski country, and you happened to be in, and uh, I was uh, at the visitor center where your mother worked, and he and she said, she flagged me down and said, "Hey, Corey's back here," and that's the that's the first time I'd seen you since high school. So it was great to see you. And you said, you know, that you and MG were getting married, and I had no idea that you would be back here. And then very soon after that, you contact you contacted me that uh, you were coming back with the drone business. So tell me about your current business, uh, Mountain. Mountain Cat, right? Yep, Mountain Cat Media. That's, that's correct. So, um, right. yeah, so uh, Mountain Cat Media, the, the name uh, came about, you know, I, I did live in Colorado for about six years. And, um, you know, I have a, a love and passion for the mountains. Um, you know, I've, I've been a, a diehard skier uh, for, for many, many years, since I was eight years old, I believe. So I, I definitely have a fascination with those mountain peaks. And, um, you know, that was the first half of uh, the name. And then the cap is literally my initials. So, you know, you have mountain tops and you have mountain caps. So it's like, you know, what, what better way to uh, incorporate my name into the business with uh, just using my initials at the end of the mountain. Uh, and, of course, media uh, referring to um, cinematography, videography, um, uh, aerial imagery, and ground photography. So, uh, all so types you're, of multimedia. You're, you're doing it all, not just not just uh, drone photography. You're doing uh, cinematography as well. That is correct. That is correct. Fantastic. So, mm -hmm. Fantastic. So being a being a sole proprietor LLC, uh, you know, being a one man show, you you kind of have to do it all. You you yeah. you learn the business ethics. Uh, you know, you you learn about the, the taxation. Uh, all the legalities, and then of yep. course that one, uh, that one, will, that one will get you. I've been an LLC uh, proprietor myself for a couple of years, and then that one, that one will make or break you. Let me tell you, it really, it really does. You, know, you have to have your business license, you have to have your general liability insurance, depending on what what you're doing. You know, then uh, not, yeah, there's there's so many uh, moving parts. And it, it can be very intimidating, um, to say the least. So I'm, I'm very glad I, uh, I stepped up and you know, took on the challenge. And um, I'm, I'm so glad I did because, you know, there's, there's so many, it's always a learning experience. You're, you're never, it's almost like a practice. You know, you're, you're never going to know everything 100% uh, because every, the, the rules and regulations are always, always,
always changing. So, um, so that's why it's like, you know, if you're a photographer, you're going to have to be an editor. If you're a videographer, you're going to have to um, be the, uh, the director of photography. You're going to have to be the director uh, of uh, shooting the video. You're going to have to reach out to casting and um, talent. Uh, then you're going to have to edit that video, figure out a way to distribute it. You know, so there's, you wind up wearing a, a lot of different hats throughout mm -hmm. the entire process. And as, so, a, um, as a creative person, that is both a curse and a blessing, I'm sure. Amen. Yes, you couldn't have said it better. So, yes. definitely.